Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to walk through how to make a Blazor WebAssembly app and host it for free in GitHub Pages. So this literally took me about like 10 minutes to do and I have a website up and running um, that you can go to that's made in Blazor WebAssembly. And again, it's all for free and it'll take you about 10 minutes. So if you're a junior dev or you need to make a personal project website, uh, I think this is for you. So if you don't know already what GitHub Pages is, let's take a look at that real fast. Um, so basically what GitHub Pages is, it's kind of GitHub's uh, solution for hosting small um, personal websites or project websites. So they're intended to be kind of lower scale websites that are rendered client side. Um, so for me, I'm a .NET developer, so I would not be able to make an MVC web app uh, that's rendered server side and use this to host it. So this is, you're going to have to figure out if this is the right solution for you. Um, but chances are, if you want to make any kind of personal project website or resume website, anything like that, this is probably going to be a really good solution. So if you don't know, or if you haven't looked at this already, um, definitely go check out GitHub pages and just kind of familiarize yourself with that. Um, before we get started as well, you are going to want to make sure you have the latest .NET Core SDKs uh, as well as runtime. And if you have Visual Studio 2019, um, you should already have this, but if you don't, then you might need to download this. And before I get into the tutorial as well, um, this I followed along this guy's here on YouTube, Blazor Bill, um, <laughs> and he, he posted a video basically talking about the same thing that we're going to show today in this video. Um, so definitely go check out his channel and his video, and you can follow along with that video if you want instead. It's pretty much the same thing. So anyway, let's start. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open um, Visual Studio. For me, I'm using Visual Studio 2019, and we're going to create a new project, and then look for a Blazor app. Hit Next, and then we're just going to call this... Uh, Steven, because this could be a resume website or something like that. So create that. And then what you're going to want to select here is the Blazor WebAssembly app. Now, if you don't have that option, uh, which is possible you don't, um, I will be including in the description a um, command that you'll have to run to install that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So just select that and don't change anything else. And then hit Create. <clears throat> okay so you're going to get your standard right out of the box project and like I said before if you did not see that option what you'll need to do is go to tools NuGet package manager and then package manager console and then when that loads up you will need to run this command right here as of this video I already have it installed so I'm not going to run it uh, but what that's going to do is it's going to go out and fetch the Blazor WebAssembly project template for you to use. Um, and again, as of the video, it should work. If it does not work, you may have to search around for where you can install the latest version. So assuming you have that, the first thing you're going to want to change about this is you're going to want to expand um, pages here. And then you're going to want to go to index.razor. And then how this works is you're going to need, you need to give it a route to go to. So we're going to give it a route and we're going to call it Steven. So that allows us to get to kind of the main index page. Whoops. Slash Steven. So again, that'll, make, that'll allow us to get to the main index page. So once you give it a route, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to index.html in the root there and you're going to want to delete this base um, link there it, it causes errors for whatever reason um, in github pages when using WebAssembly. so once that is deleted next thing you're going to want to do is go to nav menu dot razor and where you see i'm looking right at i don't see it 
Hang on just a second, if I can find it. <laughs> okay, right here, you see the nav link and href. You're gonna want to name. You're gonna put the name that you put in the index uh, .razor file. So whatever you name that. So for me, I believe it was Stephen, and let's we can double check that. So you're gonna want to just copy what you have in index.razor and paste it in the href, and don't put the slash in there. You don't need it. So once that is up, we're gonna build. So it should build successfully. Okay, once it builds, right click the main project there and go to publish and then select folder. Um, I, I'm leaving it where the folder location is. Create profile and go ahead and hit publish. It's got some like crazy file path we're going to have to go to in a second. So, um, okay. Oh, usually it goes, that's clickable. I guess not. Uh, so what you're gonna need to do is, you're gonna wanna navigate. I will show you in a second once I get there myself. Um, you want, you're gonna wanna go to this path right here. Um, for me, it's users, Steven, source, repos, and then whatever you call the repository. And if you don't know, uh, how to get there, you can actually go to your project here, right click, and then go to open folder and file explorer. And that will take you pretty much where you need to be. So if you if you did that method there, um, go to your bin folder, release, net standard, publish, <laughs> Steven distribution, and th these are the files finally that you need to put on GitHub. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is open um, open your GitHub account and go ahead and make a new repository. And you can call a repository whatever you want. For me, I'm just gonna call it my name since that's what I'm pretty much calling everything else. Um, I'm not gonna fill out any of this right now. I don't, I don't really care about it now. So create repository. Um, once we have that, go ahead and click Upload an Existing File. And remember, we have our files right here that we need. So just highlight them and drag them and drop them here. And it's going to take a second for those to upload. Okay, once they all upload, um, I'm not going to put any commit um, description or anything like that. You don't need to. Um, I wouldn't recommend that if you're actually making commits. So <laughs> go ahead and commit the changes. And it will take a second to process the files, a few minutes. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, if you are maybe more of an entry-level developer, uh, if you're a student or in school or just want an easy way to make a project website or make a resume website and you want to do it for free, and you want to use uh, Blazor WebAssembly, uh, which is really new. I think that they just came out with the production release of WebAssembly. I'm pretty sure this year. I could be wrong, but I'm, I think it's that new. Um, so if you want to use like the latest you know, framework to build it, uh, this is definitely an option. I would highly recommend you do this. Uh, if this was kind of an option when I was making all my, all my stuff at the time, uh, I definitely would have used this. For me, I use my. I think I made my personal projects website on like Wix or something like that. But I should have done something like this. Um, but yeah, so once you once it processes um, successfully, what you're gonna need to do now is you're gonna need to add a new file and create new file. And the name of the file is weird, but what it essentially is is GitHub Pages tries to put styling over your project and the styling is not really compatible with uh, the WebAssembly's project template. So you're basically going to add a file telling it to ignore that style. Uh, so the file name, just put that in there, no Jekyll. Um, so once that's in there, don't change anything else uh, and then commit the new file. 
So when that gets added to your code repository, what you're going to need to do now is go to settings. Okay, and then go down until you see GitHub pages. Um, and then under source, you're going to need to select the drop down. And then for me, it's the main branch. And if you're following along, it's going to be the main branch for you. I think the main here is your master branch, um, I would assume. And then when you do that, just click save. And then it's kind of weird when you click save, it kicks you back to the top. But scroll back down and go here. And then click refresh, though, until it, until it turns green. I'm pretty sure when it's blue, it's not going to work. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so when it, when it turns green, you have to check. Uh, let's go here. And it should, yeah, it should take you to the website. So, guys, this is a full website up and running. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to go to my phone, and let's see if we can navigate there from my phone, um, which we should be able to. What do we got? My last name dot github dot io slash Stephen. Remember, that's the route we gave it, and then slash, and there's the website. So I don't know how much time we just took, but not a lot of time at all. And again, this is free, and you can use Blazor WebAssembly, which is crazy. A super powerful framework to build websites. Um, so you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, you can, I mean, you can pretty much do anything you would on WebAssembly, but now you can just host it for free in GitHub Pages. So if you want to, again, we didn't change anything to the, uh, the project template. We just left it as is. If we want to change something, uh, you know, you can go back in Visual Studio, make whatever edits you want to, and basically go through the same publishing process you would, uh, republish the website, and then what you're going to need to do with your changes is go back to the code tab in your project repository and go ahead and hit add new file and then upload files and then just drag and drop those files um, contained in your distribution folder. So once you've done that, you can just commit the changes again. Um, I believe you just need to refresh, and then it, you should see the changes reflected on there. Um, you kind of have to play around with this um, to see kind of what works and what doesn't um, through GitHub Pages. I don't know the full details. I just know that this is what you need to do to get up and running for free on GitHub Pages with Blazor WebAssembly. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you've used this method before, definitely let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions on how this could be improved or just anything that you want to say about the, the video or WebAssembly in general. Uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. And if you have, uh, if you have time, hit, you know, hit like and subscribe. And uh, thanks. Have a good one.